So I'm Rich Folly, we're at the National Book Festival here in Washington, D.C., and we're very fortunate right now to be sitting down with Kate DiCamillo, the National Ambassador for Children's Literature. You're right. here in the uh, hallowed ground of Washington, D.C. You come to like survey your kingdom. On the <laughs> I have no kingdom, <laughs> it is but, so cool. but happily I have readers. Isn't that great? Oh, you have many readers. That's for it's sure. It's like I'm the luckiest person. But you also have responsibilities as the, as this. Do this I? Role. Yes, as the national the, ambassador. Boy, responsibility scares me. Well, what what are the responsibilities? You get to go meet readers and have a good time talking about. Okay, why that's books a responsibility yeah. that I'm happy to take on. That's yes. That's right. Well, it's been a wonderful term, uh, 2014, 2015 for you. It's been different though. You've been traveling all over the country doing all those wonderful things. Can you tell me a little bit about what those roles are before we dive into your new Well, when you said responsibilities, it made me think of um, when I started doing this and how intimidated I was. It's like, I can't be an ambassador. But then I settled into it thinking, wait a minute. I am always the person that is like telling everybody else, read this, what are you reading? And so that has been the thing that I've been able to do everywhere I've gone is talk about books, encourage people to read, ask people what they're reading. It has been fabulous. And it's something you do every day anyway. Anywhere. Right. And so it's just been, it has been such a gift to get to, to do this, to talk to people about what they're reading, to remind them. Um, it's such a privilege to be able to read and that you can go in this country anywhere to a public library and they'll get you any book that you want. It's an amazing thing, you know? And so I, I feel like it's just kind of, if I have a responsibility, it's to remind people of, of the privilege and, and the joy of Beautiful reading. Said. Well, we're here also to talk about your new book, Kate. Francine Poulet meets the ghost <laughs> raccoon. Right. This is the second in your Tales of Declan Drive series. Yes, it's a very serious book. The yeah. first was Leroy Ninker Saddles Up. Also a serious book, yeah. And again, you're paired with Chris Van Dusen, who all readers of the Mercy Watson series, which this is very much based on. Yes. No. What a great partnership, you and Chris. Oh, he, he is amazing. It's one of those wonderful things because we've done enough of these books that when a character pops into my head, I immediately start thinking, what will Chris Van Dusen do to make that person come alive through illustration? And um, he always exceeds my expectations. They're really fun. The drawings are really fun. And, and they're based, as I mentioned, on the Mercy Watson. The, we're in the 10th anniversary of Mercy Watson now. Which we is are. Amazing. We it's are. That they've been around that long. Because when they first came, I always felt like they were sort of appetizers for you. They were sort of in-between books where you got to go have fun. And I love that. Own world now, I I know it's so it's so uh, interesting to me because when I and you and I had talked about this before, but it was like when I um, turned in the manuscript for this, no one really is like we don't know what this is because it wasn't quite an easy reader and it's not a novel. And then Candlewick worked to make this incredible thing that didn't exist. And then a happy thing with librarians and teachers saying this is you know this satisfies a reader who, you know, a segment that wasn't, and I didn't know what I was doing, but there you go. And so Somehow I think that there's something guiding you. I don't know what <laughs> it is. It may not be something conscious, but you're being, there's a force that's guiding you too when you say, I don't know what I was doing. No, it's but I don't, somewhere. but the pig knew what she was doing. That's right. right. Pig, yeah. of course I wonder. Right. Let's talk a little bit about how these books sort of play off of Mercy Watson, which was a wonderful series. And I noticed that these books are a little bit more advanced in reading. They're almost more chapter bookish. Right. A little less picture bookish, though there's certainly some wonderful illustrations. I know there's a different style, they're black and white, or there's a different kind of approach to that. But they seem a little more advanced. Yes, which um, again is the um, genius of Candlewick, because when I turned in the very first one of these, it was a Leroy story, and I did it um, in the same format that I do Mercy Watson. And then Karen Lotz, who's the publisher at Candlewick, said, wouldn't it be great if we took these secondary character stories, because I said that I wanted to do more, and made it into something that's almost a novel, but not quite a novel, so that you can take the kids who learn to read with Mercy Watson and then take them up a level. And I'm like, that's brilliant. I don't know if I can do it or not, um, but I'll try. And so that's, that's how that happened. And it opened up this whole uh, door inside of me. And so I did that first one and then everything was just waiting behind it. So Francine Poulet and then next um, 
Baby Lincoln gets her own story. Oh, Baby Lincoln. Yeah, I, ba yeah right, because Eugenia never lets Baby talk, and <laughs> Baby right. finally gets her own book. And uh, then after Baby, uh, Eugenia gets a book. So it has, it's been a wonderful experience for me, and that whole thing that you said about working on something shorter in between the novels also applies here, so it's like um, sorbet, again, between meals. But it also allows some of these amazing background characters in Mercy Watson. In Mercy Watson, the pig, the poor side wonder, Mercy is this huge star and, and, and has this amazing life on Dekawu Drive. But there are all these other characters, and you get to now kind of dive in. And Fran, it's Francine's turn. And here's this animal control officer, the most decorated animal control officer <laughs> in Grisford <laughs> County, which is amazing. I think at the You're good, was, uh, You're the very good. Animals control. Right. 47. <laughs> different awards, which is amazing. I mean, the characters are wonderful. You get to really kind of take a deeper slice and look at these characters that some of these people have gotten to know. Right, right, it's so much fun. And then Mercy um, always shows up one way or, or right. the other, and so that's always fun for me too, because I never know exactly how that's gonna happen, but she always manages to get her porcine face in there. Is it porcine, is that how you say it? I hope so. I think not, that's it's like it's one of those words I keep on meaning to look up the pronunciation. Equine, porcine, oh, yeah. see, that sounds good, right? Yeah. Equine, yeah. A porcin, who knows? <laughs> but I will say that there's always hot butter toast for all somewhere. In right. Stories. Toast shows yeah. up. Mercy shows up. Yeah. Yeah. I love toast. Yeah. So, how many of these books do you think that you'll have? There's three that you just you just gave us a tip that uh, Baby Lincoln, another wonderful. Yeah, character and then after books. Baby Eugenia, so that's four, and I, I'm hoping that I can do. Six, I've got some ideas rolling around in my wee little head. So. so you have these, you write these wonderful novels. You've won the Newbery Award twice, most recently for Flora and Ulysses, The Illuminated Adventures, before that for The Tale of Despero, but so many other wonderful books that have, my family has grown to love. Then there's a whole new generation of people that have grown up with these books now. And some of those haven't even discovered some of your other books. What is it like to have these sort of split personalities as a writer where you're appealing to two different, three different age groups in some cases? I don't know. It's like it was really impressive to listen to you say all that. And it's like, wow, I don't know. I don't think about that. It would um, make me nervous. But there is a different style different. of writing for each one. And you sort of have to go into that place when you're writing uh, a middle grade novel versus when you're playing with Mercy or Bink and Golly, or now these books? There's, every story is the same though in that it has a voice, and um, my job is just to get out of my own way and follow the voice of the story. So while it, they're shorter and they're not as um, uh, laden w uh, with other things, they're still, it's still the same experience writing them because it's just listening to the story, you know? I do know. And as a reader um, who's read all the different ones, I definitely feel a thread of your style, of your Yeah, warmth. you can see uh, that it's me and can. everything, can't you? You really can. There's a voice that comes across in all of them, although the characters always leap to the page. And in fact, we've talked about this before, but the character names are always so wonderful. Francine Poulet and this one. But I know you love the names as much because you always yeah. use their first name and their last name. <laughs> it's always love Leroy the names. And Minker over and over and over again. It's never it's rarely just Leroy. I, I love names and the names are the only and I think I've said this to you before, the only part of writing that's easy for me and they just they pop yeah. into my head. And that's why I always have a notebook with me because um, although and it's odd because there you know, there might be a real Francine Poulet there. I got um, a letter a long time ago from a woman who uh, her grandmother's name was Mercy Watson, and um, and her grandmother was a librarian. Um, and it's like, oh my goodness, who would figure there's a Mercy Watson? I'm just thinking these things are like the product of my fevered imagination, but there you go. Yeah. There's a Mercy Watson in the world. Well, I, my, I had a dad named Leroy. There's not many Leroys in the world, so Leroy Ninker is one of my favorite characters. It's so too. much fun to say it, isn't it? Leroy it Ninker. Yeah. Not just Leroy's name, but like, um, the other characters in, in the in the book that you mentioned, where, but for some reason, like you can't just say their first name. It's Beatrice Leah Polio. I say Lee Polioni, but you know, I my fifth grade teacher, Mrs. Spinell, said you could say a proper name any way you wanted to. So since I made it up, I say Lee Polioni. Say it after me. Lee Polioni. <laughs>
It's hard to do. But I, it's, that's what's fun for the kids, though, to be able to figure out how to say the darn name, first of all, and then to say both names together. It's yeah. Really and time. then, and then, Chris Van Dusen right. is going to draw that person, right. which is just like... He has to like, envision, like, what does Beatrice look like? Right. And he, he nails it. Well, he nailed Francine Quinn. He sure did. Yeah. Yeah. She's like, I got her down. I mean, I know that woman. <laughs> Tell me, before we go, we only have a minute or two left. I know you're always thinking about and ruminating on uh, the next big Kate to Camilla novel, and there are always an event when they happen, and everybody always wants to know what's going on, where is it, when can um, we expect it? I've got a novel. I'm still stuck on the phrase big Kate to Camilla novel. I'm not going to think about that. I've got a novel <laughs> that is done um, and will come out in spring of 2016, in April of 2016. And I'm not saying the title yet. Um, but uh, it's about three f friends in, in the south in, in the summertime. Sounds like uh, Kate to Camilla oh, somehow back in there south, summertime. Uh, that's another yeah. part of your life, too. Excited to see that. Yeah. Well, I, I, I trust that you'll read it, Rich. Oh, I, I, I trust you. There. Yeah. I'll be there <laughs> along with uh, many, many others. Kate to Camilla, so nice to have you here again. I Thank hope that you. you enjoy the National Book Festival. I know there's a lot of excited fans of yours here. Uh, a bunch of people who love books all in one place. What could you ask for? There's nothing better. Thank you for talking to me. Oh, thank you. I love seeing you. Yeah.